Guru Ji was a monk for the great university of Nalanda. He studied to full fruition and he had reached a stage where he can attain full enlightenment in Islam. So he gave back his robes, he gave back his vows to Nalanda Monastery, and he became a lay person. And he wandered throughout northern India in secret caves and secret hideouts, of which one we visited in Nepal to do many, many types of meditation to prepare his work for converting the northern barbarians to the path of the gentle Buddha. And it would not be an easy task because he will have to face many powerful mountain spirits, the shamanistic gods, magic, physical, and mystical. He will have to traverse across long distances, which he required to have Psychic walk, which is a type of walking you can practice in yoga practices that's very fast and also fun. So he had to achieve the normal, common, siddhic, S-I-D-D-H-I-C powers and the extraordinary siddhic powers. And Guru Ruchi, Padma Samhava, the one born from the lotus, went into extreme meditations and extreme practices to gain the inner and outer and physical and extraordinary cities in order for his tremendous job to subdue the barbarians of the north. That's predicted by Buddha. Because if he subdues the barbarians of the north, those barbarians will preserve and hold the Dharma in such a way it will spread to benefit many in the future. So Guru Ji reached that level and he practiced. And he practiced many Nidams and many, many deities. But the Yidams that he practiced was Vajrakilaya in order to gain the powers to subdue the very powerful mystical forces, spirits and demons that he will encounter in Tibet. And subdue, control them, and get them under the protection of the three jewels. Swear them. Nature, one of the most powerful protectors in our country, used by the Tibetan government, is subdued by Guruji himself. And his heart essence, his essence, is placed in a vase in Sanye Monastery built by Guruji, which up to today is the holder and the receptacle of this powerful spirit who is actually evil, who followed Guruji, now becomes a receptacle in helping his holiness to preserve Dhamma. Ekazaki, one of the most main forms, a main practices of protectors in the Nima sect. One face, one two. One breast, she's female, has been subdued in a psychic war by Guruji and became a sworn protector. The 15 sister goddesses of Tibet, Tining Jana, are very powerful, resides in the mountains. They're female, they ride on different mountains. They also were very powerful forces against Guruji. So Guruji has completely subdued those forces. And he did that by accomplishing the great tantra of Ajakilaya. And he accomplished so much in Tibet that we don't have time to talk about today. But he also had, because he was in a lay person's form, in order to control those with lustful minds, who only engage in lust for the sake of pleasure in itself, to, con con uh, to transform and change their minds out of great compassion, he took on many consorts. He had many, many consorts where he planted the seeds of enlightenment in their mind. And many, many famous consorts. And one of those famous consorts who had the great merit to become Guru Ruchi's disciple and consort and lover and cook and liaison and assistant was a great Dakini named Nishitoya. And we call her Dakini because she wasn't a normal woman. She's quite highly attained. And by living and practicing and staying with Guru Ruchi, Nishitoya was able to attain full enlightenment in her life, in her body, not another life, not the next life, in her very body. Because during her lifetime, she showed many, 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 many signs and attributes of an enlightened person. And she herself had the permission of Guru Ruchi to give initiations, teachings, transmissions, empowerments, 
during Guru Ji's lifetime, she herself became a fully awakened being in her lifetime. Therefore, there are initiations associated with Yeshi Togya and the practice of Yeshi Togya. Why she's a Buddha already? She's not even a consort of Guru Ji. Guru Ji was her guru, was her master, was her mentor. She became fully enlightened. So to this day, everywhere in Tibet, she is a Tibetan. She is accepted as a fully enlightened Bakun, fully enlightened Buddha, whose practices are alive, who are vibrant, and there are many teachings associated with Yeshi Togya, hidden in Dharma form, secret form within the Nima sect, Nima school, that people practice until today. So what she is is basically another practice to bring you to enlightenment, which came about during Guru Ji's time with his permission and with his blessings. Her sadhanas are like any other sadhanas. They have refuge for immeasurables. They have uh, bodhicitta, the generation, and they also have the eight limbs. And all the sadhanic features of any sadhana that will bring you to full enlightenment. The object of focus is the Kundra Yeshi Togyal, which is Takini Yeshi Togyal, the Great Lady Yeshi Togyal. The object is all sentient beings, and the method is her sadhana. So one of the images I found that was extremely beautiful there was this beautiful lady who became enlightened in her lifetime, who showed us that by intense guru devotion, intense guru devotion, you can become enlightened, and she proved it. She proved it by showing many miraculous signs. I won't go into today. You can read her biography. Yes, she told you. Very, very famous. This is not accepted by one sect or one school. Everybody accepts that. Everybody knows that. So not every scholar and master in Great Lama Tibet can be wrong. They ain't going to just put any schmuck up there and say he's enlightened or she's enlightened. You've got to show the signs. So incredible. Incredible. Kandra Yes, she told you. You said she was a fully awakened Akini. Awakening means ready for higher practices to become enlightened in that lifetime. Okay. Awakened can be mean ready. That's different from no, awakened can be ready for enlightenment or enlightenment. Depends on the context. In this context, she, she got enlightened, right? In this context, she wasn't ready for it and then she became enlightened. Oh, okay. Both ways. So she was a Dakini or anything? She was a lady. But when you refer to a lady and to show her respect, you call her Dakini because she's advanced in her practices already. Oh, okay. So it's a respectful yeah. term to show someone of their spiritual attainments. Mm -hmm. You don't run around just calling anybody a Dakini. Right? It's very respectful because just to call her a lady is, is not respectful. So we call her Dakini. And dakini means sky -core. One who can traverse the sky. Mm -hmm. Who can fly across the sky. And there's many meanings to that one, but never mind. Because Dakini is what we call Kandro. Kandro means sky goer, one who can fly across the sky. Inner, inner wise sky goer means flying across the lineations of your mind. And the outer Dakini means, yes, she's a cheap psychic power where she can actually fly across the sky. So next time you see a beautiful lady flying across the sky, she ain't the witch of the east. She could be a Dakini. 